He mentioned something interesting. Square Enix is pursuing new research. He claims that what they're doing in Japan is the missing piece. A weapon to surpass Kyrie. Hey guys, how's it going? So we all know that for the longest time, Kyrie A has been the de facto buffer that you want to put out the front of almost every single one of your Keyblades. Before that, it was Illustrated Kyrie. Before that, it was Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie. Before that, it was Illustrated Kyrie, another one. There has always been a Kyrie out the front of a Keyblade in almost every circumstance you can think of. If you want a generic jack of all trades buffer that will do just everything you want perfectly, a job well done. Well, as of right now, that has changed with the brand new Namine medal. So it's pretty close to Kyrie, it's Kyrie's nobody, but Kingdom Hearts 3 Namine is without a doubt the best buffer the game has ever seen by a absolute landslide. It is not even close. Every other Kyrie at least had some little feature missing that made you want to let like made you want to get extra attack or made you need a little bit of extra support to make it work this thing for the current buff cap which hey may increase is absolutely perfect absolutely perfect to my mind could not be improved in any way shape or form let's quickly go over what it does so as of right now we have a plus 15 minus 15 buff cap and that hits literally every single buff it could hit upright and reverse so despite the fact that it's an upright power metal it gives you plus 15 general attack, upright, reverse, power, speed, and magic, as well as lowering the enemy's general defense, upright defense, uh, reverse defense, and power, speed, and magic defense. All in one cast, all in just one cast. Don't even mind the fact that you get extra attack. Hey, if you've been debuffed and you get extra attack on the thing, easy peasy. You just got yourself plus 30 that will literally get you out of any hole the game could possibly put you in. It's pretty insane. Adding to that, every single time you cast it, you gain 2,000 strength to every single medal from that point onwards, no matter if it's upright, reverse, power, speed, or magic. It is an overall generic plus 2,000 buff. And plus 2,000 is already, like, plus 2,000 itself is already good, but the fact that it applies to literally every single medal after that, no matter what the attribute, is just even more insane. It does all the other Kairi effects as well. It does a heal, it, de uh, it does the Asuna effect, so it gets rid of uh, poison, process of sleep. It gives you back two gauges as well, I believe, sorry, five gauges as well, I believe. So, I suppose in that respect, it doesn't give you as much as, as Kyrie does, which gives you ten. Um, who cares? It does a, <laughs> it does plenty on its own. Um, and it also, whenever you cast the Supernova, it gives you that 280% bonus, which is standard right now. As well as giving another plus 5,000 to every single thing in the game, every other medal that follows. It is by far and away the absolute perfect buffer to go out the front of every single Keyblade in the game. Completely insane, and adding to that, you know, like all buffers, it should have a pretty weak multiplier, right? A pretty low strength so that you put it at the front of a Keyblade, and you just get your buffs out, right? Uh, no, as of right now, it has one of the highest strength values in the entire game, and by far and away, the highest strength multiplier by a landslide. It is completely and utterly stupid. Like, the, the strongest setup in the game right now is seven of these in a row, with your, your obviously five, your pet, and then your friend. It's not even a contest. This thing is utterly, utterly, utterly ridiculous. It really makes me wonder what the game is going to look like soon, because I do believe this is meant to be a buffer. It's meant to be a buffer, and I can only then I can only imagine what sort of over, <laughs> what sort of big attacking metals meant to follow it. Anyway, let's have a look. Okay, so obviously with your only power keyblades, no brainer. It's going to go right on the front there and do a lot of damage in that correct slot. What I'm thinking is though. Obviously, the single attribute keyblades are the best keyblades in the game right now. The update recently gave them that huge buff that sort of brought them back from complete obscurity and made them really, really powerful again, especially the earlier three keyblades in the game that were just before utterly useless. Unfortunately, in doing so, they really nerfed the heck out of the tricolor keyblades, which up to that point were some of the absolute best, probably the three best keyblades in the entire game. I do wonder if going forward we're going to see a little, little buff to there. So maybe bring them all to within a very, very close amount of power to each other. Obviously, you can never get it quite equal because players' powers will differ significantly based on how many subs they have, how how many gems they've invested, whatever, whatever. But maybe given that it's a clear, far and away, you know, difference that the single attribute keyblades are best right now. At some point, I believe this is going to be balanced out a little bit more. Anyway, point is, what I'm trying to say is that. Fairy Stars and Bad Guy Breaker look to get a huge, 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 huge boost if that does happen because Namine fits in perfectly. Obviously, I'm using two Namine in the position of the Kingdom Hearts 3 Namine, but 
how much potential does a Keyblade like this have when you put that buffer at the front and again it buffs literally every metal that follows it, meaning that a tricolor Keyblade is perfect because it's boosting reverse magic, upright magic, reverse power, upright power, whatever, 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 chooses to follow one from that point. It's ridiculous. And of course, Bagger Break is even better because you're not limited to upright or reverse. You do whatever you want to. So I'm really thinking that Namine has huge, huge, huge potential. And again, you may be wondering, well, why if it is the best multiplier and one of the highest strengths in the entire game, am I putting it first in the weakest slots? And again, what I'm saying is that I think this is meant to be a buffer. I think this is meant to be a buffer that will... Again, I'm clicking on Kingdom <laughs> I'm clicking on two Namine, not Kingdom Hearts, three Namine, but you get the point. I think it's meant to be a buffer and that in the future, insanely strong medals will be sitting in the rest of these slots here because we all, you know, we all saw what happened with Kairi. A, or every other Kairi for that matter, it always comes out a relatively respectable strength, low multiplier, but that's not the point. The point is you get, you get out the essential buffs that you need to do damage with the rest of your really high damaging attacking medals that maybe don't buff up quite as well, or do good buffs that benefit themselves but don't benefit the rest of the Keyblade. I think this Naminate is going to be like the first of a new huge leap in power of BAM, Naminate's at the front, and then BAM BAM BAM, just a ridiculous amount of high strength medals. And hey, wouldn't you know it, uh, Remind is coming out pretty soon. I'm sure we'll get a bunch of new renders for Remind, potentially some Kingdom Hearts 3 renders for Foretellers, who knows what kind of stuff could come out, but plenty of new bosses I'm sure are going to be coming out, so I can definitely, definitely see a ton of high strength medals coming out in the next few months. and. I think Namine is just going to be the sort of forebearer for all of that which is about to happen. And then who knows, maybe maybe even Kairi will take back her throne at some point as well. Who knows? But, man, <laughs> as for a skill to put on it right now, I would say, again, pretend this is Kingdom Hearts 3 Kairi. In the meantime, if you're going to use a Nominate towards the back of a Keyblade, oops, towards the back of a Keyblade, uh, yeah, a generic attack boost skill, attack boost, you know, 9, 10, or 11 max. Uh, obviously ones that don't reduce SP don't bother with them because you're already at zero gauges. Um, something that you're willing to replace, so like if you get like a spare 9 max or a 10 max lying around and you just want to throw it on there for now, I reckon that's a good idea because something that you're not willing, something that you're willing to lose, because I think in the future you could end up putting a defense boost 6 max or a second chance 4 on it and be pretty happy with it. Again, I'm assuming that high damaging metals are going to be coming along to take the place of these metals in the back. Um, when it does come into the shop, the way it happened in the JP version was that it was a VIP a banner, 10 pulls would get you guaranteed a Namine, and the regular poverty banner for people like me, <laughs> uh, I, know, I hope you guys know it's a joke when I say that, uh, the regular povo banner was, uh, again, 10 pull mercy to get you either Kingdom Hearts 3 Kari B, uh, Shion B, the upright speed one, or Namine herself, so a 1 in 3 chance of the new Namine. Oh, and for the first pull on either of those banners is free. So basically, for a VIP player, 27 grand to guarantee yourself one copy. For a free-to-play player, 27 grand to get a 1 in 3 chance at a Namine. Oh, I'm really tempted. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty tempted. We'll see what happens when it comes out. I don't want to bore you guys too long. But yeah, it's a ridiculously powerful metal. It is, it's shaken me up enough to the point where I'm like, well, I should make a video about it. Describing how good the thing is. I think it's going to be a metal that like sticks around in the meta for a long, long, long time. Unless they do a significant shake up to the buff cap or release yet another new mechanic out of nowhere. It's pretty ridiculous though. It is a metal with literally zero downsides at all. And only a little while ago we had a metal that was, <laughs> you know, 50,000 strength and a times 17 multiplier. That cost you 30 gauges to use. Now this thing comes along and does so much more than that for maybe slightly less damage. I'd have to do the math, but I honestly don't think it... It's slightly less strength of a higher multiplier, so I think at the end of the day, it might work out roughly the same. And it's only been about three months since Pirate Sora came out, and that metal was, again, hugely powerful at a huge cost, to the point where it's almost prohibitively restrictive from being used. And now this thing exists, and it's like, man... <laughs> I have never seen a game with power creep like this. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys a bit later. I'm... I'm coming back around and making videos again. I was in a weird place with YouTube, but I really, I miss making videos a lot. So I'm hopefully going to do a bit more. Anyway, guys, all the best. Catch you later. Sorry, I'm really tired. I just watched the screening stream at 5 in the morning. All the best, guys. Bye.